The Man Who Wrestled With God Today we explore the captivating story of Jacob and Esau, a tale resonating with the human experience of family conflict, forgiveness, and reconciliation through narrative. Through engaging storytelling and insightful analysis, we discover the profound lessons embedded within this ancient narrative, serving as spiritual nourishment and guidance for our modern lives. At the peak of his 40 years, Isaac, the son of Abraham, embarked on a journey of love and faith when he joined Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, in union guided by divine designs, marking the first steps of a destined offspring to shape sacred history. However, the couple's happiness encountered a challenge in the form of infertility, which affected Rebekah's heart. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his beloved wife, expressing deep faith and trusting divine providence to overcome the barrier of infertility afflicting them. Isaac's prayers were promptly answered and Rebekah became pregnant, the miracle of life unfolding in her womb, revealing the divine presence that had shaped them from the maternal womb. During pregnancy, however, the baby struggled within her, causing her concern. One day she questioned God why this was happening. God promptly responded, two nations are in your womb and two peoples will be separated from your body. One will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. In this divine revelation, God shared with Rebekah the profound meaning of the turmoil within her, revealing that the twins she carried were not just brothers, but the beginning of two distinct nations. Furthermore, God announced that the elder, Esau, would serve the younger, Jacob, reversing the traditional order of primogeniture. Thus began the unfolding of divine purpose for Esau and Jacob in their mother's womb. The long-awaited moment finally arrived when Rebekah gave birth. Esau emerged red and covered with peculiar hair, while Jacob, grasping his brother's heel, announced his entry into the world. The birth of these two children, so different in appearance and personality, signaled the fulfillment of the divine promises made to Isaac and Rebekah. As the years passed, the children grew. Esau became a skilled hunter favored by Isaac, while Jacob preferred to stay among the tents and had a closer relationship with Rebekah. The venerable father Isaac realized that his journey on earth was coming to an end, feeling the urgency to bless his firstborn before departing. He called Esau, his eldest son. However, in the shadows of the tent, Rebekah, a cunning mother aware of divine revelations, listened to the conversation between father and son. In God's wisdom, it was revealed to her that the blessing destined for Jacob, the younger son. Therefore, trusting in the divine promise, Rebekah devised a cunning plan to secure her son's destiny. While Esau obeyed and went out to hunt to please his father, Rebekah instructed Jacob to bring two young goats from the flock. With skill, she prepared Isaac's favorite dish. Taking advantage of Isaac's fragility due to his old age and blindness, she instructed Jacob to impersonate Esau. The trick reached its climax when Rebekah covered Jacob's smooth arms with the goat's skin to simulate Esau's hairiness. The scene was set as Jacob, initially hesitant, followed his mother's plan and disguised as Esau received his father's blessing. Influenced by Rebekah's cunning manipulation, Jacob received the paternal blessing full of divine promises including prosperity. Simulating Esau's hair, the scene was set when Jacob, initially hesitant, followed his mother's plan. Disguised as Esau, he received his father's blessing. Influenced by Rebekah's astute manipulation, Jacob received the paternal blessing full of divine promises, including prosperity, dominion over his brothers, and the power of words that blessed and cursed. Tragedy unfolded when Esau returned home and discovered the deception. Consumed by fury, he threatened Jacob's life. Fearing for his son's safety, Rebekah advised Jacob to flee to his uncle Laban's house until Esau's anger subsided. After leaving his homeland, Jacob embarked on a journey that would take him to Haran, where he intended to find his uncle Laban. During his journey, Jacob arrived at a specific place and decided to rest. During this night, he had an extraordinary and significant dream in which he saw a ladder extending from earth to heaven with angels of God ascending and descending on it. This ladder symbolized the direct connection between heaven and earth, representing the open channel between God and humanity. 
The presence of angels ascending and descending highlighted the constant and active nature of this spiritual connection. Furthermore, during the dream, God stood at the top of the ladder and addressed Jacob with a special message. He reaffirmed the promises made to Abraham and Isaac, guaranteeing that Jacob's descendants would be vast and blessed, spreading throughout the land. He also promised to be with Jacob wherever he went and to bring him back to that land. When Jacob woke up, he realized the sacred significance of the place where he had rested. He exclaimed, Surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. In acknowledgement of the spiritual experience, Jacob took the stone that had served as his pillow, erected it as a memorial, poured oil on it as a sign of consecration, and called the place Bethel, meaning the house of God. Jacob's journey continued, and one day near a well, driven by curiosity, Jacob asked the shepherds about its origin. The shepherds not only confirmed that they knew him, but also informed Jacob that Laban's daughter Rachel would soon arrive at his location. While waiting for Rachel, Laban's daughter arrived with her flock. Filled with excitement at recognizing his relative, Jacob approached, removed the stone from the well's mouth, and gave water to Laban's flock. The encounter led to a deeper revelation of kinship, and Jacob, moved by genuine feelings, kissed Rachel and shed tears. Rachel then ran to tell her father Laban about Jacob's arrival. Upon learning of the relative's arrival, Laban hurried to receive Jacob with warm embraces. Jacob, in turn, shared his entire story with Laban, who recognized Jacob as a relative and offered him hospitality. For a month, Jacob remained under Laban's roof. Upon realizing that his relative was willing to work for the family's good, Laban proposed a deeper alliance. Laban had two daughters, Leah the elder and Rachel the younger, both remarkably beautiful. Jacob's heart leaned toward Rachel and he proposed to work for Laban for seven years in exchange for Rachel's hand in marriage. Laban agreed to the proposal, witnessing Jacob's tireless efforts during this period, whose love and devotion were like a solid foundation. The long-awaited moment arrived, and after seven years of service, Jacob, now married to both sisters Rachel and Leah, consolidated his family under Laban's roof. During this time, he not only experienced the challenges of complex family relationships but also thrived, building his own flock. In his providence, God blessed Jacob's efforts, multiplying the animals under his supervision. However, as Jacob's prosperity grew, tensions with Laban also increased. Recognizing the need for autonomy and seeking to fulfill God's promise to return to his parents' land, Jacob expressed his desire to leave. Laban, realizing that Jacob's presence was a source of blessing for himself, tried to persuade Jacob to stay. However, guided by God's call, Jacob remained firm in his decision. Thus, accompanied by his wives, children, and flocks, Jacob embarked on the journey back to the land of Canaan. However, this return was not without significant fears and challenges, mainly the fear of facing his brother Esau's anger. Jacob had feared this encounter for years. He devised a cunning plan to appease his brother's possible anger, deciding to send a caravan of gifts, including animals and valuable goods, across the Jabbok River. This offering would be a gesture of reconciliation and an attempt to soften Esau's heart. On the night before the encounter with Esau, Jacob made a crucial decision. He gathered his two wives, Leah and Rachel, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons and crossed the Jabbok River. However, Jacob realized that he needed to confront his deepest fear and remained alone on the other side of the river. It was then that an extraordinary event occurred. A mysterious man appeared and wrestled with Jacob throughout the night. The struggle was intense and symbolic, representing the battles and challenges Jacob would face on his journey. Jacob had fought all his life, from the moment of his birth, his conflict with Esau and even the challenges with Laban. Now, about to reunite with Esau, Jacob faced the most difficult moment of his life. At the height of the struggle, in an attempt to end the confrontation, the man touched Jacob's hip joint, leaving him limping and wounded. However, Jacob refused to give up, insisting on receiving a blessing. Then the man asked Jacob his name. The revelation of Jacob's name triggered a significant twist in the narrative. The man declared, You will no longer be called. Preserved, this transformative experience left Jacob with a new identity and a renewed perspective. 
At dawn, Jacob, limping due to the hip joint touch during the struggle, continued his journey. We reached the climax of the story of Jacob and Esau, where the feared encounter between the brothers approaches. Tension hangs in the air, laden with Esau's previous threat to kill Jacob. Aware of the delicacy of the situation, Jacob adopts a measure of humility and submission. He bows seven times before Esau, a symbolic gesture of respect and submission, demonstrating the depth of his desire for reconciliation. Surprisingly, Esau does not respond with hostility as many might expect but runs toward Jacob, embraces him, and weeps. The scene is powerful, marking the long-awaited reconciliation between the brothers. The bitterness of the past seems to fade away in the genuine expression of forgiveness and brotherly love. Despite the reunion, Jacob and Esau decide to follow separate paths Jacob settles in Sukkot, where he builds a house and shelters for his livestock. This phase of stability symbolizes not only Jacob's material security but also the peace achieved after years of uncertainty and conflict. Later, Jacob travels to Shechem, where he buys land and erects an altar dedicated to the God of Israel, witnessing not only the personal reconciliation between Jacob and Esau but also the restoration of the spiritual connection between Jacob and his Lord. The story of Jacob, marked by tensions, conflicts, and ultimately reconciliation, offers a powerful message about the possibility of forgiveness and restoration even in the most challenging situations. Do you identify with a specific part of Jacob's story? Is there something in your life where you feel the need to seek forgiveness or renew your relationship with God? Leave a comment here, perhaps we can help each other. As we conclude our exploration of the story of Jacob and Esau on the Biblical Stories channel, we are reminded of the enduring relevance of biblical narratives in shaping our understanding of human relationships and spiritual growth. Through their journey, we gain wisdom about the transformative power of forgiveness, the importance of reconciliation, and the profound impact of divine grace in our lives. May these timeless lessons inspire us to navigate our own challenges with faith, humility, and a commitment to fostering harmony and healing in our relationships. Thank you for joining us on this enriching journey through the pages of scripture. Hugs, and may God be with you.